question. Um, so I'm not sure, obviously no one is, if June is going to be a flex test as well. Yeah. Um, if they tell us maybe in two weeks that it's going to be, do you think it would be wise to study, uh, like do the full practice, practice exam and just do the three sections? Well, I guess my thought is, is that, well, two things. One, a four-section test or a five-section test is definitely harder than a three-section test. I mean, it may not be that much harder, but it's, you know, it requires just more endurance. Mm -hmm. So if you end up taking four-section tests as opposed to five, to get a score and do sections back to back. When you go do a three section test, I think you're only just, you're just gonna be happier. Like it's just okay. like, hey, great, like this is better. So do you need to cut it down to three? No, not necessarily. Could you? Yes, you could. The challenge that you would face then is calculating a score based on those three sections. They've made it confusing by saying that they're gonna give equal weight to all three sections. Um, the easiest way you could calculate a score is take whatever score you get from the three sections you decide to do. Obviously you have to do games, reading, comp, and LR. You can't do <laughs> two LR and a game. But um, you take the three sections and you multiply them by four thirds. And then that would get you into the normal scale, right? Oh. And then you could kind of estimate your score on the basis of that. Actually, the best thing to do, now that we're talking about it, um, you have your four sections. Let's say you have LR, reading comp, games, LR. What I would suggest is you do all four, and then you're going to get a score for LR. Let's say you get 18 on this one, and you get 21 on this one. Well, uh, and then let's say you get uh, 20 and 20, just for easy math. Well, you could have a score of, oh, what is this, 58? No, yeah, 58, right? Or you could have a score of 61. And you take these two numbers and you multiply them by four-thirds, and now you have your score range. Uh, you, on flex, you would get anything between this and this. Of course, you have to multiply this by four-thirds so that you can then put it into the score conversion chart, which is between 1 and 100. Now, you guys don't have access to that necessarily, but you can. Uh, we'll try to get that on the daemon, but you can also just Google, like, uh, you know, LSAT scale, whatever the test number is, and it should pop up. Someone has it online somewhere. We'll try to get that as well. But, um, demon scale. <laughs> Anyways, you could figure out your score range, right? And say, which is actually what's gonna happen on test day because there's gonna be, there's gonna be more variation depending on how you did on that uh, LR section. More weight is given to it now. Thank you. doubling the score of that one LR section to determine... They're not doubling it. I mean, I thought that's what they were going to do, but they're not. They're going to give each section equal weight. 